I'm gonna be honest with you, it has been a rough couple of years for fonts. But if you love making fonts and you're gonna do it, you're gonna sell them no matter what, you wanna make a living doing this, this is how I would stand out from the crowd in 2024. This is how I would start a type foundry. What is up? I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and in 2021, I started selling fonts that I was making. It was absolutely amazing. I was able to make a living without a job, no bosses, no clients, total creative freedom. I was making money while I slept. I could spend time with my family. I could travel. It was a dream come true. Now we're in 2024. Things were rough in 2023, and they might be rough again in 2024. One thing that I did to really set myself apart and make it through these tough times was starting my own type foundry. In fact, I plan on starting another type foundry in 2024, and this is exactly how I am going to do it. Now, you may ask yourself, what is the difference between just selling fonts and starting a type foundry? You may even ask yourself, what the heck is a type foundry? Well, let me hit you with this. Back in the day, I'm talking about the time of the printing press when fonts were made using lead type. Companies who made fonts with this lead type called themselves foundries because they worked in metal. Nowadays, font designers don't often work in metal. It's all digital, but we still call ourselves foundries. So what is the difference between just someone who sells fonts and someone who starts a foundry? In my mind, it is this. A type foundry has a website. It seems simple, but it makes a world of difference. Someone who sells fonts just sells fonts on third-party platforms. For a lot of years, this is what I did. I sold my fonts on Creative Market, on Etsy. You work for them, in Vato Elements, everywhere I could, but they were all third-party marketplaces. Then in 2022, when I decided to get really serious, I started selling fonts on my own website, and I started to consider myself a type foundry. Or rather, the business I ran was now a type foundry. Now, you may ask yourself, why was there such a difference? Why does it make a difference whether you sell on your own website or on these third-party marketplaces. Seems like a lot of work. Is it really worth it? Well, let me explain to you the power that I found when I started selling fonts on my own website. Don't worry, I am going to get into the step-by-step -step about how to set up your own foundry and start selling fonts on your own website in just a bit. But before I go there, I really want to illustrate to you the power that comes with selling on your own website. The number one thing is you are able to reach a different audience. The person who buys fonts from foundries, from specific foundry websites, that is a different person than the one who goes to Etsy to buy fonts or the one who shops at Creative Market. This person is willing to pay top dollar for a premium product. These type of people are people that just cannot be reached on these third-party marketplaces. So if you want to cast a wider net and be able to sell to a customer who really, really values type design, starting your own website, calling yourself a foundry is the play. Not only that, but on your own website, you can control the licensing. This may seem like in the weeds, nuanced, but trust me, it makes a difference. As an example, on Creative Market, 
when somebody buys one of my fonts, they cannot use that font legally to make a logo. However, on my own website, I can offer that service. Maybe I'll charge more for it, maybe not, but I can decide those things. Not only that, but when you are selling on your own website, you get more money for each sell. On third-party marketplaces, Creative Market, for example, when they first started, they would give their designers 70% of the sell. If I sold something for $10, I was making seven. Later down the line, they changed it, so they only gave me 60. If I sold something for $10, I got six. And again, a couple years ago, they changed it, so now I only get 50% of the sale. You see, I don't own Creative Market. I don't make the decisions. They can do whatever they want, and I just have to say, okay. So when you sell on your own website, you are not beholden to the behemoth company and the decisions they make. You get to keep so much more money from each sale you make. Now that you have seen how powerful it can be and the advantages of selling on your own website, before you dive right in, there are three questions that you need to ask yourself to know if you are ready to start selling on your own website. Question number one, are you ready to start doing marketing. When you first start designing fonts, the advice that I will give you is sell on these third-party platforms. And this is good because you want to spend all of your time or most of your time doing the actual designing of the fonts. You don't want to worry about setting up a website and a business and marketing. But eventually, you will get to a point where you're really good at creating fonts and is not taking up all of your time and mental energy to create high quality fonts. When you get to this point, if you have the mental capacity and the time to start marketing, then okay, it might be time to start your own foundry, start selling on your own website. Because the truth is, Nobody is going to go to your website by accident. Nobody's going to go there, just happen upon it because it exists. You need to figure out a way to invite people to visit your website. If this seems overwhelming, do not worry at all. Later on in this video, I will explain the simple process I use to invite people to my website. So look forward to that. In a couple minutes. Question number two. Are you confident that you can make at least $300 a month selling fonts on your own website? If you are making on these third-party platforms $1,000 a month, chances are you will be able to make $300 selling on your own website. Now the reason you need to ask yourself this and have this as a benchmark is because selling on third-party platforms is generally totally free. But in exchange for freely selling your goods, the platform is going to take a percentage of each sell. Industry standard nowadays is 50%. If you sell on your own website, you don't have to give away some big percentage of each sell, but you do have to pay a monthly cost. There's a cost of paying the platform that hosts your website. There's a cost of buying your website's name. There's a cost of a place to keep all your potential customers. These costs, for the way that I'm going to show you how to set it up, are around $100 a month. So after taxes and those costs, if you're not making you know, $300 a month just as a base, it's probably not going to be worth your effort to set up your own website and maintain things and do marketing on your end. Question number three, do you know your target audience and are you offering them something unique? This question is a bit trickier, a bit less concrete, kind of harder to answer, but no less important. You need to know your audience as a font 
designer. And your audience needs to be more specific than graphic designers or people who like to buy fonts. As an example, on the current Type Foundry, I have that that type. My audience is designers who are looking for high quality fonts loaded with features like open type features, alternative characters, variable fonts, but don't have a large budget. I have been obsessively designing fonts for about four years. The quality of my work is at a certain level, but even so, I am only charging $15 per font style. Other foundries in a similar vein as myself charge as much as $60 or $90 per font style. I'm offering entire variable font families with 70 or more styles for only $120. As far as I know, as far as I've been able to see, this is unique within the font industry. My audience is mainly designers in the European countries who really value well-designed typefaces, but they're small, you know, freelance designers or small companies who just don't have $5,000 to spend on a typeface. They might have a couple hundred. Yes, I realize there are flaws in creating your business model around inexpensive products. However, that's not the point. The point is you need to know specifically what your audience is and you need to offer them something unique. If you don't do that, you'll be just another one of 1,000 type designers. It will be very difficult to do marketing and you will just get lost in the noise. Okay, now that you have seen the why, the power behind starting your own website selling fonts. Now that you know what it takes, let's get into the how, the steps that you need to take to get this thing started. And as a side note, I have spent years trying to figure this out, a lot of trial and error. I've spent thousands of dollars trying to figure out the best systems. I've used a zillion platforms for building websites, your Squarespaces, your Wix. I've used a zillion different CRMs, which stands for Customer Relationship Managers, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video. And I have finally landed on a process that I am happy with. I only say that so that you know I'm not just theoretically putting something together what I think might work. I've been in the trenches, years trying to figure it out, thousands of dollars, and I finally have landed on something I'm really happy with that I'm excited to share with other font designers who just want to make a living doing what they love. Step number one, you need to buy a website name, or as the business calls it, you need to buy a domain. Let me show you how to do that. Here it is. You are going to go to domains dot squarespace dot com it'll look like this you can search for the domain you want let's say the best designer in the world dot com let's see if somebody bought it it's unavailable and you want to know why that's because I own it as a side note if you want to go to my personal website the best designer in the world dot com but I digress this is where you are going to search for the website that you want to buy, whatever name, and you can see it's super inexpensive to buy this website. $14 a year, well worth it. Squarespace is super easy. Step number two, you are going to build your website and you are going to build it using, not Squarespace, I know it may cross you up because that's where we bought our domain, but you will build your website using font do. Let me show you what that looks like. If you go here, fontdo.com, that's F-O-N-T-D-U-E.com, whatever, fontdo.com, this is what you'll see. You can start a free trial for 30 days to set up your website, make sure everything's looking nice, make sure you like it before you commit, 
All you need is a Stripe account and you are good to go. Once you are done with your free trial, which is plenty of time to get your website set up, I believe the cost for Fontdue is $45 a month, somewhere around there, and then they do take 5% of all your sales. Trust me, it is well, well worth it. You might be able to find a platform to do it for cheaper, but selling fonts on your own website is a weird, bizarre, very difficult thing to do on generic platforms. Font do is made for selling fonts online and it does it much better than any other generic website builder could. Let me hop on to my website to show you all of the wonderful things that font do does. Here we have it, that, that type. All of the things that I set up are automatic. Basically, the only thing I had to do to customize was decide what colors I wanted my website. So I have here, homepage, all of the font options. Let's click into one, let's say Lastic. Right here, you have your images that you want to upload. Bum, bum, bum. You should already have these from your third party platforms that you're selling on. You got your cool things, you have this. You know how hard it is to put that in a regular Squarespace site? It's not easy. If you scroll down, we even got even fancy things. You can select the different open type features you want going on, small caps, whatever. Scrolling down, we have this zoomed in view of each character. Now all of these features will just elevate the font browsing experience. Remember, the person who buys fonts from a Foundry website is not the same person who goes to third-party platforms. The person who buys fonts from the Foundry website is gonna love all these extra features. It just elevates your type in a way that people are going to be comfortable and confident spending the money that you ask for. I mean, you're gonna ask for a reasonable price because you're not a psychopath, but this definitely elevates the font buying experience. It's something that really speaks to the customers who shop for fonts on specific Foundry websites. Not only that, if I scroll back up and hit buy font, this checkout process is so difficult to achieve on a Squarespace or a Wix or what have you. Here, I can select, let's say I just want the semi-bold. Let's say I want the extra bold. Let's say I want the regular. Let's say I want the bold. And once you select enough options that it is going to cost the same as buying the whole family, the whole family is automatically selected. Then from there, you can choose your license type. Again, this is very hard to achieve on third-party platforms. Let's say, okay, I wanna buy it all for a company with 50 employees. It's gonna cost $600. It's much more than what it might cost on Creative Market. But again, I can offer so much more value. You can use this font to make a logo in broadcasting, unlimited use on web, unlimited use on products. There's no restrictions. It's going to cost you more but you will receive so much more value. This is something that I can set up on my own website. And remember, the customer who shops font-specific website, Foundry websites, is the person who wants this. They want more features, they want more usability, and they're willing to pay more for it. Another thing that Fontdo does super well is if you go to test, you can receive a trial version of all the fonts. You can download them for free. There's specific restrictions. You can't use them for personal work or commercial work. It just is to test, but it's a way for somebody to use your fonts before they buy them to see if they're right. It's something that Creative Market or you work for them or Etsy does not offer. It adds, again, an elevated font buying experience and confidence to your buyers. Here you can define your own licensing and write a little something about your foundry. Font do 
is the platform to use if you are starting a type foundry. In this particular video, I'm not going to go into deep detail about everything you need to do to set up your font do platform. It is fairly easy. Definitely you will be able to do it within the 30 day trial and the customer service that I've experienced through them is super, super awesome. It's a small company. They really care about each customer. And just so you know, this video isn't sponsored by font do or anything like that. It just is an amazing product. So now that we got that, we have our domain, we have our website set up, we need to jump into step three. I'm talking about marketing. Like I said, if you are overwhelmed by marketing, don't worry. I'm going to make it super simple. In marketing, you only need to worry about two things. Number one, a way to introduce yourself to people. And number two, a way to interact with people who show interest. In the business world, we call a way to introduce yourself to people a lead magnet. We call a way to interact with people who show interest a CRM or customer relationship manager. Now that might be getting a little businessy, but don't worry. I'm going to break this down super simple. As a way to introduce myself, I use Behance. And as a way to interact with those who show interest, I use Flowdesk. Let's jump into it. Here is my Behance profile. This is where I post all of my font projects. You can see I got a bunch of them, but this is what I want to hit you with the main important way to introduce yourself to people that I personally have found works. And that is giving away something for free. You can see here that I got little carts on the top left of most of my projects and I am selling these. However, on this last stick, you can see in the top left it's free. Again, it's a free font on the title. It's a free font. If you look down here at the bottom right of this elastic thumbnail, 30,000 people have seen this. I have introduced myself to a lot of people. So if I click into here, this is how it works. This is my project. I show off my font in various different ways. Okay, okay, okay. But the important thing here is at the bottom of the project, download Lastic, or at the top of the project, download Lastic. Now, I just want to take a pause here to insert this ideology. You should give away your best work for free. Not all of your work. Obviously, we need to make a living. But I've created 30 some odd 40 fonts, and Lastic is my favorite one. And I give away this one way of it for free, for commercial use, however you want to use it. Yes, I am losing money on that one font. However, let me show you why giving away your best work, your most desirable work, is worth the potential price that you could have sold that for. If somebody clicks this link here, download Lastic. This is what will happen. They're directed to this thing. Lastic is free for personal and commercial use projects, whatever. By downloading it, you agree to be added to the that that newsletter. The person types in their email. They hit send me the font and then they receive an email with the font. And I, as the font designer, now have the email address of a potential customer. I can continue to interact with this person who has shown interest. This is where Flowdesk comes into play. Let me hop on to my Flowdesk account and show you how powerful this can be. This is my Flowdesk account. You can see this yellow guy here. This is an audience I have, and it has 10,000 subscribers. I gave this font away over a year ago and still I'll get 10 or 20, 
new subscribers a day, 10 or 20 people who potentially are customers, people who I can continue to interact with, who I can show, hey, this is my work. If you like it, if you ever need it, you can get it. I have found that for me, my subscribers hover around 10,000, sometimes more, sometimes less, as people subscribe or unsubscribe. But this is a very, very powerful thing. I have 10,000 potential customers who I can talk to once a week, a couple times a month, send them an email, remind them, show them, hey, if you ever need any fonts, if these fonts are fonts you like, maybe you haven't seen them, here's a new one, what do you think? I'm giving 10,000 people every week or a couple times a month a chance and a reminder that they can buy my fonts. Even if just 1% of these 10,000 people decide to buy a font, that's not bad, that's 100 customers. And at $15 a font, you can do the math there, that's pretty good. Now, I know marketing can be overwhelming, so I wanna break this down super simple, exactly how to set this up. I'm gonna hop back onto my Flowdesk account and show you what's what. On Flowdesk, the first thing you need to do is go to audience up here at the top, go to segments and add a new segment, call it what you want, give it a color, easy as that. This is a segment, it's a place to store email addresses. Once you've done that, you need a way to collect the email addresses. You need this web page. Super easy to do. Just go to forms up here. You can boom, click add a new form and you can follow the steps, create a form. Now that you have your segment and your form, you are going to go to workflow. You are going to boom, add a new workflow. You're going to scroll down and do lead magnet delivery. This you can customize it. This is where you set up the actual situation. The trigger, this is where you wanna click and you say your trigger is when a subscriber is added to a segment. So they fill out your form. In the form, you say go to my segment. You can choose your segment here, Extra Credit Design Club, and then you hit this second little module. You can edit your email. Okay, okay, in this email, this is where you can click to add download. You add a link here. You attach your font file. You finish it up. You say what you want to say. Super simple. And that is how you set up a way to introduce yourself on Behance with a free product. Somebody can download it in exchange for their email. You now have that email address added to a list of people who have shown interest in your fonts, a list of people who you can email once a week, a few times a month, whatever. And it is easy as that. You have a way to invite people onto your website on a regular basis. Again, I want to let you know that this isn't just a conceptual framework. This is something that I've spent years trying to figure out what's the best website builder, what's the best marketing platform. I've spent hours and hours and thousands and thousands of dollars trying to figure this system out. I'm super happy with these four steps. It's something I think most type designers at this level can accomplish. And with that, I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel and we can hit you with more videos. And as always, I'll catch you in the next.